And welcome to a special edition of USA Basketball in a land far away. The United States will take its first step this morning in trying to reclaim the top spot in the basketball world. Sapporo City, Japan, and the site of the FIBA World Championship. You're looking at the Hokkaido Perfectoral Sports Center, where the U.S. tonight will take on Puerto Rico. In the first game in their uh, Class D preliminary round, LeBron James and company. I'm Jim Durham with Fran Frischella. Glad to have you with us this morning. Glad you stayed up late on Friday night or got up early on Saturday morning. But Fran, uh, that five-game exhibition tour for the U.S., for the most part, it was blowout after blowout. Well, it was, and it certainly built the USA's confidence. This is a team with great chemistry. It's shown great leadership, but this is when it gets serious. They were only challenged by Brazil over those five games, and of course, J.D., not a close game versus Korea. And this was an exhibition game. Korea is not in the World Championships this year. As uh, the officials huddle up uh, at the scorer's table just prior to the tip of this game. And of course, the United States in that exhibition run, you're taking a look at some of the rules differences that we have in uh, FIBA as opposed to the NBA game. Four 10-minute quarters, a shorter three-point line. You foul out on five personal fouls and, and not shown there, but something that has already come into play in the um, exhibition run as you look at the Puerto Rican team with Carlos Arroyo of the Orlando Magic. Um, I was going to talk about the uh, five personal fouls, Fran. A technical is like a personal. Very much like the college game, and it came into play, J.D., in the Brazil game where Dwayne Wade picked up a fourth foul, then was charged with a technical foul, and he missed most of the second half in that basketball game. The United States having defeated Puerto Rico in the first game of the exhibition tour in Las Vegas and de field them, uh, defeated them strongly uh, in a, one of their lopsided wins. And it's almost like, as you look at the officials uh, for tonight's game, it's almost as if, friend, the stage is set because it was Puerto Rico losing to the United States in Jacksonville prior to the 04 Olympic run in Athens and then turning around in the first game at Athens and beating them handily. And that might be a blessing in disguise for this 06 Team USA because that is something that is on the minds of this team, particularly Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, and Carmelo Anthony who all participated in the 2004 Olympics. Let's talk a little bit about the differences between that United States team and this one. This one appears to be a better shooting team, uh, both in conventional field goal percentage and three-point percentage. Well, I think that what Jerry Colangelo, the senior managing director, Mike Krzyzewski have done, they have built a team that is more conducive for international play. You mentioned the outside shooting, also the versatility of their players and particularly big guys like Brad Miller that can step away from the basket, shoot to three like we see so much in international play. And the other thing that Mike Krzyzewski is wanting to do with this group and has done very well in their exhibition run defensively is get up the floor, put pressure on the ball. Well, there's no question that it's hard to develop offensive co continuity in just a short period of time. So what he's doing is he's turning pressure defense, hopefully into pressure offense, for the USA team that gets up and down the floor very well. United States averaged 110 points a game in that uh, exhibition run and gave up 75.8. And perhaps uh, more importantly, and pertaining to the pressure defense, the U.S. forced about 25 turnovers a game. And in the process, uh, USA turned it over 12 times. So it's a big moment for uh, United States basketball. Well, it's certainly, we're back on the road to redemption after a dismal sixth place finish in the 2002 World Championships and a third place finish in the 2004 Olympic Games. This uh, team from Puerto Rico is very Americanized. They've got players who were born in America. They've got players who played basketball in the United States. Uh, and it, it was almost as if uh, going back to that uh, Olympic game in 04, that uh, that experience of uh, having played uh, uh, the American style of basketball really paid off for them. Well, it really does. And I think the other thing is there's no intimidation factor because 
These Puerto Rico players know Team USA very, very well. Mike Krzyzewski has started uh, different starting fives throughout. You see Elton Brand uh, ready to move in and jump center against Daniel Santiago. They're having a bit of a delay because of uh, a clock issue at the Hokkaido Perfectoral Sports Center. The uh, State Farm starting lineups tonight covered by State Farm. Anthony Jamison and Brand up front for the U.S. Chris Paul and LeBron James in the backcourt. Antonio Latimer, Carmelo Lee, Daniel Santiago, Larry Ayuso, and Carlos Arroyo for Puerto Rico, and the U.S. controls the tap. Well, no surprise. Puerto Rico goes to a zone. The U.S. will see a lot of zone in this tournament. And uh, the first attempt from the perimeter no good as uh, the U.S. tried to work inside with a pass. It's loose. Recovered by Anthony. Here's Jamison. And a travel violation against the United States. So Puerto Rico with a chance to get the lead. Well, you're going to see a lot of traveling calls. The traveling call in FIBA basketball is a little bit different than the United States. It's called much more closely. And Dwayne Wade can attest to that. <laughs> the key for Puerto Rico is their backcourt, particularly Arroyo, who can really get going. Arroyo turning it over. Here's Chris Paul on the advance. Anthony gets the shot up. Cleared by Santiago. Well, zone certainly will keep the U.S. on the perimeter. That's Arroyo getting to the rim. Arroyo really bothered the U.S., particularly in that second quarter of the ex exhibition game in Las Vegas with dribble penetration. Three-point heave missed. Rebound tapped out of bounds by the United States. Well, this is going to be important. When you attack zones, you really want to attack it from the inside out, not rely on that jump shot, which the U.S. has done early. Ayuso, number 10. Good guard play by Puerto Rico with Arroyo and Larry Ayuso. And again, it's dribble penetration, but that time the shot wouldn't go down. Elton Brand. Anthony. They got inside of the zone as uh, the United States pulls even. Well, once you attack the inside of the paint, that contracts the defense, and that will open up for easy jump shots. Here's a foul called on the United States. Here's to be on Paul. We both know Coach Toro has talked about changing his defenses and not showing all of those defenses in that exhibition game. And it's uh, the last go-round for Coach uh, Julio Toro. Since 1999, he's done a great job of building this Puerto Rico basketball team. But he's already uh, announced that he will be uh, retiring as uh, the head coach of the Puerto Rican national team. The three ball goes down, and Puerto Rico goes up by three. Carmelo Lee. Well, Carmelo Lee, one of all five starters who played college basketball in the United States for this team. Anthony against the zone, turns it over. And now the United States with a steal. Paul with the basket and the foul. And Chris Paul has been the sort of the spiritual leader of this team because of his leadership. Here's the penetration and the foul by Santiago. And again, you must attack the inside of the zone, that time off of a turnover. Chris Paul during uh, the exhibition run averaged over six points a game and hit seven of 13 free throws, but his three-point play here pulls the U.S. even. Just underway in game one of the Class D competition, Group D. And Arroyo has the shot blocked, and it's out of bounds. Well, you see the great penetration by Arroyo, but Elton Brand swats that shot away. Dribble penetration is going to be very important for Mike Krzyzewski's defense tonight. Latimer, number 11, trying to go inside in the U.S. with a steal. Now in transition. Carmelo Anthony is open with four early points as the U.S. has taken the lead.
A big thing for the United States, J.D., is you know there are going to be some jitters because all of these guys feel the pressure of representing uh, this team and getting that gold medal. Santiago has some size on that American front line and uh, good effort by Santiago as he stayed with it to draw the foul. Well, you remember in Las Vegas, Coach Toro went to Santiago early and doing the same thing again. Young man from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Played at New Mexico, actually didn't play very much. Played behind Kenny Thomas, transferred to an NAIA school, St. Vincent's, and has had a very good European career, of course, on this Puerto Rico national team. Tie ball game. Three minutes in. Keith, the key for the United States is to make sure they move the ball but attack the inside. Because uh, you're right. I mean, they're going to see nothing but uh, zone defense over the top and out of bounds. See, the tricky part about zone defense in international play is there's only a 24-second clock. Right. So you don't have the time to work the ball side to side like you can in college. But the NBA guys are used to that 24-second clock. Puerto Rico doing a good job against uh, the American team from uh, a defensive standpoint on the U.S. side. And uh, Dwayne Wade coming off for the United States. He has entered the lineup. Carmelo Anthony goes out. There you see Wade. Puerto Rico running some pick and roll that time. That freed Santiago. Santiago having a good go of it at the free throw line in this first quarter. See, it's a 3-2 zone. Good movement by the team in white. That was Wade off penetration. Antoine Jamison stealing the outlet pass and Puerto Rico in transition. A five-point lead. Quick shot by the U.S. Quick shot and what we talked about earlier, a little bit of jitters. Not surprising. Puerto Rico's job as the underdog here, J.D., is to keep this game close. Now they have the lead. But the longer this game goes, the more I think the U.S. will feel the pressure of winning this opening game of the preliminary round. And so far, Fran, in this early going, this is almost a carbon copy of that game one in the 04 Olympics. You are right. 28-7 run in the second quarter broke that game open. And it's because of a lot of jump shooting and missed jump shots by Team USA. LeBron James as he hung that one nicely off the glass. Good things happen when you attack the middle of the zone. U.S. getting the turnover and the run out. Two hoops in a row for LeBron James. And you don't have to worry about attacking the zone when you can use your defense, that pressure defense you talked about, to create offense in the open court. Mike Krzyzewski's goal is to use all 12 players, wear, this, wear these teams down. Shane Battier has checked on for the United States. The U.S. with four points in a row, both hoops by LeBron James as they trim the five-point Puerto Rican lead down to one. Dwight Howard has also checked in for the U.S. Santiago sends it out to Latimer. That's Ayuso. And now the U.S. with a chance at the lead. Good, solid defense. That time they kept the ball from getting to the lane off penetration. Good help. LeBron James feeding in. Battier sends it back out. It's a three try by Paul, and on the uh, rebound, a loose ball foul called on the U.S. Dwight Howard called for the foul. 
No, you never mind a foul like that, an error of commission. Howard over the back, but that's okay. Mike Krzyzewski wants him attacking the offensive glass. Kirk Heinrich coming on for the United States. Interesting, J.D. Puerto Rico did not get to Japan until Wednesday, much later than most of the teams that can contend in this tournament, so I wonder how fatigue may play a factor. It was an economic standpoint. Yeah. They, they felt like that if they waited a couple of days, they could save some money. And uh, the U.S. with the steal and the run-out jam by Dwayne Wade. So much of what the U.S. wants to create is havoc with the depth and the versatility and the pressure defense. And six points in a row for the United States and a one-point lead. A pass into the post is stolen. Good job by Howard circling the post to make the steal. The uh, depth of the United States as uh, this foul called here on a shot attempt by Howard is what comes into play and we will see a lot more of not only in this ball game here in the uh, early morning hours back in the U.S. but uh, also throughout this FIBA basketball championship. Want to remind you that tomorrow morning at 6.30 Eastern on ESPN2, the United States takes on China. And then on August 22nd, it'll be Slovenia. All of these games at 6.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Italy should be strong in this group and Senegal. Well, Slovenia with four first-round picks on that roster in the NBA, including Primo Brezic of the Charlotte Bobcats. Dwight Howard dropping the free throw down. Howard was just 5 of 14 in the exhibition run. How about Mike Krzyzewski has already gone 10 deep with this team. Talked about the depth and making sure, you know, it's only a 40-minute game. Right. Not a 48-minute game, so depth can really play a factor. That's Wade left it up there, lefty, and Howard had it momentarily but lost it out of bounds. That's twice now, Howard, with opportunities to score. He's not a quick jumper, but very active, young player. And getting better all the time. All the time. Boy, the U.S. getting after it defensively, and that's Howard making the block. Heinrich saves it in play. The United States, with a two-point lead, they've run off the last seven. They've run off the last ten. On a three-point hit by Battier. That all started with a great hustle play by Kirk Heinrich to save that ball that led to an open court three. And now a foul called on the three-point attempt by Puerto Rico. So three free throws coming. And you see the penetration, the block shot by Howard. Oh, man. In fact, that was a double block shot. <laughs> he blocked that. <laughs> with, with he had his, his elbow above it. I think his arm did. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to foul a three-point shooter. Carlos Arroyo. We've been watching this guy for a while. How about in 2002-2003, J.D., he was the third point guard with the Utah Jazz. Uh, John Stockton and Mark Jackson, two pretty good guys to learn from. Carlos Arroyo with four points right now. So his free throws have put an end to the USA run. USA had scored 10 in a row. And now Puerto Rico back to within two. As uh, Puerto Rico makes the substitution, Peter Ramos in the lineup. Washington Wizards, Peter Ramos played the. Uh, very well for the Roanoke Dazzle this year in the NDBL. A lot of promise. Listed at 7-3. Hmm? Wade unable to find an attempt. Joe Johnson in the lineup, number four. And uh, that long rebound finally tracked down by the U.S. And you see why Shane Battier is on this team, too. Great hustle play. Puerto Rico coming up with a steal and a chance to tie or get the lead with a long one. Very, very crafty guards. And you have to have that to play against the United States because of the pressure defense. A 
Arroyo on the miss. It pops out of bounds, so the United States the ball with a two-point lead. Here we go, D -way. Uh, Arroyo is one of those guys as a coach. He, he keeps both teams in the game. He can be very, very good, and sometimes he can be a little bit erratic. That's Heinrich hitting the shot, but will it count? Kirk Heinrich of the Chicago Bulls. Really a late addition mm -hmm. to USA basketball, but uh, he's made the final 12 and in the uh, exhibition run played well for Mike Krzyzewski. You know, you never want to compare this team to the dream team, but he gives you a little bit of what John Stockton gives you. Apparently a technical foul has been called against the United States. If you would have seen it, you would have called it right away. <laughs> Mike Krzyzewski talking with the official. You gave him the ball. Now, this is what we talked about, J.D. The, there's only two American officials in this tournament out of 40. And one of the things I disagreed with, USA Basketball did so many things right. But in the exhibition series, I would have not had any American officials in those games because you have to get used to, let's say, uneven officiating. When I say uneven. So Puerto Rico will be shooting a technical free throw, and Arroyo will shoot, and the shot by Heinrich does not count. It's very odd because we can't tell who the technical is on. And it's uh, two shots for Arroyo. So... Uh, Arroyo with seven points in the quarter, and now Puerto Rico pulling even at 17. Puerto Rico went off to a 12 to seven lead. The American team ran off 10 in a row to regain the lead, but now Puerto Rico right back in it. And, uh, good solid half court defense. You know, we were uh, talking about that during uh, the uh, exhibition games, the uh, U.S. Oh, tip jam on the follow by Howard on a miss by Wade. Well, he's not yet polished offensively, but an outstanding rebounder. Ramos loses the handle, and the U.S. looks to extend. Uh-oh, Heinrich left wide open. 4-3. You notice how easy the shots come when they get the ball out in transition against the zone. That time Heinrich wide open. So the U.S. has equaled its largest lead and Ramos delivers in the post. In both games, the exhibition game and this game, they have not double teamed the post. Ramos is mechanical, but a very sound offensive player. And now uh, off the ball, there's uh, some activity, and the official moves in. It's a foul on Arroyo. Apparently, it looked like he held up a seven. Well, this is a pesky team. Again, there's no intimidation factor because you've got guys like Arroyo who have had great confidence against USA in the past. Ayuso. There's that zone. And another foul called on Puerto Rico. And that's also on Arroyo. Royal 24 points, seven assists in that win back in 2004. The upset over the U.S. Of which LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, they were a part of it. And now they're the tri-captains. Hmm? They watched a lot of it right. <laughs> back then. And I think that has fueled the fire for this road to redemption. This is a young basketball team. Eight of the U.S. players under the age of 25. It's a, a young team, yet a very good one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of people not here for various reasons. Uh,
Kobe Bryant being one of them, who, when you think about, uh, as you look at the replay on this uh, move by Battier, well, they're very strict. Yeah, they're very strict, JD. You have to let go of the ball before you move that pivot foot. And they call it excessively on the U.S. team. Ramos having a hard time uh, making a move on Howard, and it's because there's a foul called on Dwight Howard. This is this is where you have to keep your cool. You're gonna have calls that go against you. I know Mike Shashevsky, and particularly Mike D'Antoni has had a lot of international experience as Mike Krzyzewski's assistant has pointed that out to these players. Uh, Dwight Howard going out. He's got two fouls. Chris Bosch coming in. Kirk Heinrich also checking out as Chris Paul returns. There's a look at Bosch in the ball game now as uh, the United States goes still deeper into the bench. And Ramos left the free throw short. But, you know, back to talking about how good this United States team can be. Mm -hmm. Should they win this competition, win the gold medal, then they're exempt and they automatically qualify for the 08 uh, Olympics. And then, you you know, you put Kobe Bryant in with this group. Yep. So I guess what I'm saying is well, I, <laughs> that's a pretty good team. It's a good group. I, I think the key is that they, as good as they are and as good as the attitude is, it takes more than three weeks to learn how to play together as a team. Oh, nice move by Arroyo. We talked about dribble penetration being a key for Puerto Rico in terms of getting easy shots, and we see Arroyo again getting to the lane un unobstructed. And keeping Puerto Rico close as LeBron misses on the three, and now Puerto Rico comes out looking for the lead. You wonder if now they'll hold for the last shot, and that's what they're going to do. Good basketball and a tough shot by LeBron. So the... Uh, United States clinging to the one-point lead, but with Puerto Rico having the final say, that could change. A block by Bosch, a foul by Ramos, and it does count. So at the end of one, Puerto Rico opened with a five-point lead, took a ten-point run from the American team, but still finished off the first ten minutes with a one-point lead. And welcome back to the second quarter. The United States down by one to Puerto Rico at the end of one. In that first quarter, there was a, a confusing technical foul called on the U.S. And it was called because they had six players on the floor. Ayuso. Nope, but a foul called, and he'll shoot two. Ayuso in Arroyo are outstanding at dribble penetration and that time Ayuso was able to get into the lane and draw the foul and that is an Achilles heel right now for this USA team half-court defense. Now you were talking about uh, Larry Ayuso he's born in the Bronx. Yep. Was uh, kind of a troublemaker involved with drugs moved out to New Mexico to Roswell New Mexico and a woman named Diane Taylor took him under her wing with some tough love. Graduated from high school, graduated with a history degree from USC. Has a very good pro career going overseas. Chris Paul gives it up. That's Elton Brand. And it's LeBron James pulling the U.S. even. Well, we've, this, this team has shot a lot of jump shots so far. They've had most success against Puerto Rico's defense inside versus the zone and in transition off steals. And here they go again off the drive, and it's Ayuso off the glass. These guys are very experienced guards. This is the backcourt that beat Team USA in the 2004 Olympics. Contact on the Elton Brand move. He gets the basket and the foul. Brand with a chance to put the U.S. back in front. And while not a pure center, Elton Brand, typical of international basketball, you see he takes the big man off the lane, so he's got space to drive, and then the soft kiss off the rim, and a chance at three. Ramos picking up the personal foul. Elton Brand unable to connect, but the ball out of bounds to the U.S. 
JD, you see that trapezoid lane is not conducive to throwing the ball inside and posting up. So when you have active mobile big men, it really pays off for you. And that's really the international game. Mm -hmm. The big guys coming outside both to shoot and to pass. And uh, off the uh, inbounds pass. You know, it's funny. One of the things I used to do when I was coaching in scrimmages with my team was make bad calls all the time. <laughs> and you really got to do that when you get ready for FIBA basketball. Not that they're doing it intentionally. It's just an uneven way of officiating something. And, and of course, in the NBA, there's always that talk that these guys get away with murder, particularly the superstars. That's not going to happen in this tournament. A Royal ran away from the double team and found the shot he was looking for. Well, he's a very confident player, and of course, he averaged ten and a half points a game for the Magic. He's got uh, a 14. Make that uh, a 12-point game working right now, and a foul here on the Wade move. And Royal, not really known as a great shooter, but this time he gets in the lane off of a little high screen. You see, right in that mid-range, and almost oh. a three. Little moving screen, maybe. That's what I thought. No, they better get used to that because it's not going to go their way. They had given him uh, a three initially on the scoreboard, and now uh, it's taken away. So he's got 11 points working. And uh, Dwayne Wade was terrific at the free throw line during the exhibition run and misses his first attempt tonight. He hit 17 out of 18 in the five exhibition games. Eight and a half for the half, and a two-point lead for Puerto Rico. Well, this is exactly that point in the game back in 2004 where Puerto Rico went on a 28-7 run, fueled by a lot of missed jump shots. There's Christian Dalmau in the game for the first time for Puerto Rico. Dalmau, 6'4", swing man. Very solid player there without Eddie Cassiano, who's played for the national team for a long time with an injury. But Dalmau, a lot of experience. And Arroyo's had a big scoring first half. That's a tough pass to handle for Santiago. Good aggressive trap that time on the pick and roll. And you see Kirk Heinrich returning. And Carmelo Anthony also back in the lineup for the USA. The one danger you have when you substitute so freely is sometimes you lose flow. So it'll be interesting to see how throughout this tournament Mike Krzyzewski plays that. We're at the Hokkaido Sports Center. This uh, game being played tonight there. Jim Durham, Fran Frischelic, glad to have you with us in the early morning hours. And uh, there's a foul on Brand making the move on the baseline. The United States as was the case um, in the 04 Olympics, having a tough time with this Puerto Rican national team in the first game of the FIBA World Championship. Remember, in 02 at Indianapolis, the U.S. finished sixth in this competition. Well, we will see some very good basketball over the next two weeks. Certainly, this is a game USA team, but the world is caught up. Score the basket and a foul. A strong drive by Delmau. Well, dribble penetration, as we've talked about, has been the Achilles heel, and you see how good these Puerto Rico guards are. And they've all got that little runner. You get that ball up before the shot blocker can get there. Very crafty players, as we've talked about. Delmau shooting for the four-point lead. The biggest tonight for Puerto Rico has been five. And the U.S. also led by as many as five earlier in this first half. Puerto Rico in sort of a matchup zone. Anthony. Carmelo Anthony, who led the U.S. in scoring during the exhibition run, averaging almost 17, has six points tonight. Beyond the scoring, we've seen a maturity level from this guy. He certainly is going to skyrocket him in his next NBA season. Rebounded by Anthony. Team USA looking to tie or get the lead with a long one. That was Paul on the miss. Here comes Arroyo. 
And Carlos Arroyo really having a great one. 13 points for him. Because of the ability to penetrate, Chris Paul was on his heels, and that led to the easy pull-up Jay off the break. You see how tight in the lane the white shirts are. That could have been a charge. And it'll be a two-pointer for Elton Brand. This is a good wake-up call for the USA. I think there were some that felt that they would breeze through the preliminary round. Not going to happen. That's Santiago. Santiago with seven. So the U.S. is going to be... Uh, well, that's a three-point hit by Anthony, bringing the U.S. to within one. The thing about the uh, American team, though, they have this ability to put some points up there in a hurry. Now, they had that 10-point run in the first quarter tonight. And you remember, J.D. was fueled off good defense, mm -hmm. but each time Puerto Rico makes a basket, the confidence level grows. Oh, yeah. There was a trip, no call, so the United States with a break, and it's Dwayne Wade finishing. That's what we were talking about, uneven officiating. It goes, works both ways. Dwayne Wade with his uh, second field goal. And with 540 left in the half, U.S. up by one. So a one-point game working here in Sapporo as Puerto Rico brings it up down one. Christian Dalmau handling the ball against Kirk Heinrich. Dribble penetration by Dalmau and Puerto Rico back up by one. Well, that's what we've talked about. And, you know, everybody was saying that the USA pressure defense would be outstanding. But when you have veteran guards, and we'll see veteran guards throughout this tournament, they're going to be able to handle that. And as we move along in this tournament, the United States tomorrow morning at 6.30 Eastern, taking on Yao Ming and China. Remember, Yao didn't play in that exhibition game between the two in which the U.S. won big. Talk to the Houston, Houston Rockets staff today, and they think Yao's about 75%, but certainly that's better than nothing for China. Anthony continuing to have a good go of it for the United States. That's 11 points for Carmelo Anthony. He's playing with so much confidence. We saw it in the five-game ex exhibition series. Arroyo lines up a three. And Heinrich on the move. His game, J.D., much better at attacking the basket than shooting that three. They move the ball. It's Heinrich with an open look for three. He's done that twice so far in the half. Remember that international line is about three feet closer than the line they work with throughout the NBA regular season. Although in the corner, mm -hmm. it's not uh, quite because it's 22 same. feet in the corners. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Uh, Anthony knocked it loose, but Puerto Rico recovers and Delmao sticks a three. That's what happens sometimes when you pressure and you gamble and you play passing lanes. It can be feast or famine, and that time, Puerto Rico taking advantage. Paul getting inside and got hooked in the process. 4.09 left of the half. You know that that guy told his team about what happened in Athens, for those of you who weren't with us. Exactly. And, and remember, you did the game in, in, in Las Vegas. That was a great atmosphere. Right. It was really a home court atmosphere. And since they've gone on the road, they haven't had that type of crowd behind them, and they're not going to. They come in with a new guard, but off the inbounds, Wade makes himself available at the rim. No great look by Chris Paul. Breakdown by Puerto Rico. The longer this game goes that Puerto Rico stays in the game, the more precarious it gets for the U.S. Three-point lead for the U.S. We near the four-minute mark for the half. And it's Rivera handling the ball, number 12. Filberto Rivera. Young man from UTEP by way of New York City. Delmau. Like they got a piece on that one. Mm -hmm. So the United States trying to extend and Chris Paul at the point. 
Anthony. Carmelo Anthony with 13. Good no call that time and a great look by Chris Paul to recognize the mismatch. And you see Anthony inside against Ayuso taking advantage of that height. Open man. And the shot goes down. And he thought he got uh, popped on it as well. Ayuso. And it's a turnover as uh, a walking call was called on Howard, but he also violated the inline when he fell down. Well, Howard, I mean, this was a delayed reaction by the official because right now that's a travel, but it took about five guys from Puerto Rico on their bench to make that call for the official underneath the basket. Mike Krzyzewski's club unable to uh, yeah, they have a, a, an open wound here with uh, Antonio Latimer of Puerto Rico. That's the reason for the delay. But uh, what I was about to say is uh, the American team hasn't been able to inflict its will on Puerto Rico yet. And part of that is the good guard play. Mm -hmm. And when you don't turn the ball over and you get shots and penetration, you're going to stay in this game. These are experienced players. And Puerto Rico's gotten fine lift off the bench. Guys like Delmao, who's come off to score nine. So there's a turnover, and it's Wade underneath. Oh, nice handoff. Dwayne Wade to LeBron James. Great save by Chris Paul. Pass a little far ahead of him, but the great save, and then Wade with the dish and the finish. So the U.S. with a five-point lead. And that equals the largest. And we are late in the first half. Almost a turnover. And that's because the team is trying to get out in transition become, before they come up with the basketball. That was Rivera who knocked out the three. Howard underneath, yep, and a foul. Nice strong move by Dwight Howard. Hard to believe this young man at 20 years old, 265 pounds, at a Southwest Atlanta Christian High School. Going into his third year, and you're right, J.D., he's going to become a tremendous player. That foul was on Ramos. Second foul on him. And Howard back to the free throw line. He split two free throws earlier in the half. Dwight Howard giving the United States a six-point lead, its biggest. See, if I were Mike Krzyzewski right now, I wouldn't worry about the pressure defense. I just want to keep the ball in front of my team right now because that's where the breakdowns have come. Here's Delmau. So you just stay 20 feet and in, no penetration. Now the shot by Ramos and uh, the tip try wouldn't go as the U.S. brings it back looking to extend about a minute and a half left. Joe Johnson lines one up and sticks a three from the corner. Joe Johnson played the most minutes of any player in the on the USA team in the exhibition series. And this is what he does so well spotting up and sticking a three. And welcome back to our coverage of USA Basketball. The United States now has opened up its biggest lead against Puerto Rico, but uh, Puerto Rico a hard team to shake to this point in the first half. Well, this game has been a high-scoring game. Certainly Mike Krzyzewski likes the uh, fact that the U.S. team is already over 50, but you can see Puerto Rico has been very effective offensively. Nearing the final minute for the half. And away from the ball, we get a whistle. And a foul on LeBron James. Oh, it's on Paul, excuse me. And Chris Paul has picked up his second. The Kaido Perfectoral Sports Center in Sapporo City, Japan. That's where we have opened uh, play tonight. Jim Durham, Fran Frischiller, glad to have you with us. As uh, USA 
playing game one in its Group D preliminary round. Chris Paul with two fouls and only five in international play. It wouldn't be a bad idea to get him out of there right now so he doesn't pick up the third. And it's Arroyo hanging the shot up, and finally it is uh, spanked in, actually, by Reyes. And a lot of that, J.D., because Paul did not want to foul Arroyo. Arroyo able to get into the lane very easily. Joe Johnson again. Joe Johnson has played very, very well in this entire exhibition series. Off to a great start today with those two quick threes. The U.S. with its biggest lead at eight. Here is uh, Arroyo getting the shot up, got bumped. And Arroyo is injured. The basket is good. There was no foul called, but Arroyo apparently feels like he can continue. Well, Shane Battier turned his back. Arroyo with a heck of a play, splits the trap. You see the floater. Now Battier turns to block him out. And Arroyo goes down. And the way he's playing, J.D., the one guy Coach Toro cannot afford to lose at the end of this half. But he's going to lose him right now as uh, he's going to the sideline. 15 points for Arroyo so far tonight. As he did in Athens, he has done in this game. Kept Puerto Rico very competitive with the U.S. Well, Brian Hill and the Orlando Magic have got to be pleased with Arroyo, Dwight Howard. Of course, Darko Milicic is in this tournament playing for Serbia Montenegro. Final seconds of the half and a foul called on Puerto Rico. Now, if you told Coach Toro that he had a chance to be down under 10 going to the half, I think he would have taken it. Absolutely. After uh, the U.S. ran away with Puerto Rico in Las Vegas in their first exhibition game. And uh, Arroyo is coming back in. Seven and a half seconds left in the half. There's a good chance that he will have the ball in his hands. <laughs> his final 7.5. After the two free throws by LeBron James. One for two in the game. So LeBron James won for three tonight from the line, and he was 10 of 11 in the exhibition run. Let's see if Puerto Rico can take advantage of those two misses. As the first half has come to an end, the United States led by as many as eight. But right now, the U.S. heads for the locker room with a six-point lead. The spectacular plays have been far and few between. But the Americans still lead it at the half. And we're about ready to go to the third quarter. USA basketball in Sapporo City, Japan. Taking on Puerto Rico, Mike Krzyzewski's club leading 57-51. Hakeno Perfectoral Sports Center. With Fran Frisella, I'm Jim Durham. Glad to have you with us in the early morning hours of this game one for LeBron James and company. Carmelo Anthony led the Americans in scoring with 13. Carlos Arroyo led Puerto Rico with 15. And Dwayne Wade came off the bench to score seven. You, know, you look at these guys, J.D., and they start Howard and James and Wade, and as good as these players have been in their early NBA careers, there's no player on the floor right now older than 24 years of age. So uh, you wonder how this first opportunity to play in this world championship may be affecting a young team like this. Puerto Rico, also a young team, although, as you have mentioned, uh, experience there with Arroyo and uh, Ayuso, the other guard. So the third quarter underway with the U.S. in possession. Anthony couldn't get opened up. LeBron James to Wade and a foul call. Hard to tell right there. It almost looked like Puerto Rico may have gone man-to-man. -man. Now, Coach Toro 
in the past has switched defenses up. They played exclusively zone in the first half, but a good recognition by the USA to go right inside to Dwayne Wade. Coach Toro told us in Las Vegas before that exhibition game that uh, that victory by Puerto Rico over the United States in the 04 Olympics was the biggest basketball moment in Puerto Rican history. And while that's true for that particular game, their performance overall at the Olympics, not that good. They've done better in the past. Well, that one scare back in 1976, right? Dean Smith's club uh, beat Butch Lee mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico 95-94, the closest uh, game that that gold medal winning USA team had that season. Santiago, nicely done. Well, the pick and roll has been very effective and it points out to me that in three weeks time, it's very hard to have cohesive defensive play and we've seen that tonight. USA not really on top of their game in the half court. Although Chris Paul delivers there for three. Right now, they need to be sound in the half court, not worry about stealing the ball. Keep the ball in front of them. And a minute into this third quarter, the U.S. up by nine, its biggest. Arroyo on the miss. Here comes LeBron James. Chris Paul circles the wagons. Paul had just knocked down a three and he passed up an open three there to put the ball on the floor. Should have shot that ball. This is Anthony. And the foul on Latimer. Really good strategy right here, J.D. Puerto Rico in a matchup zone. So what they've done is they've taken the ball to the weak side. They've isolated Wade and now Anthony. And even though it's a zone, it's a matchup zone. So there's a man-to-man -man situation there to take advantage of. So Carmelo Anthony with 15 points working and shot 74% from the line in the exhibition run for the U.S. I'll tell you what you love about his game. He shoots the ball from the outside, but then he's got the strength. Remember, at Syracuse, he was a power forward. Mm -hmm. So he's versatile offensively. U.S. gets a steal here. Anthony leaves the ball for LeBron, and it's uh, now the biggest lead for the United States, a 14-point lead, and Puerto Rico is taking a timeout. We're early in the third, 67-53 USA. So the U.S. has been able to put some distance between themselves and Puerto Rico here in the uh, early moments of the third quarter. Well, the one thing we talked about in the first half, if you're Puerto Rico, you want to stay within striking distance, and then the pressure goes to the U.S., but not right now. And that was Anthony digging that one loose. In transition. Oh, oh what a move. LeBron James with the basket and the foul. What a great dish by Chris Paul. And you see LeBron with the running start. And interestingly, sometimes they'll call that a travel in FIBA, of course, they don't see that kind of athleticism every day. A great pass by Chris Paul. Angelo Reyes has checked in number five for Puerto Rico. LeBron James averaged just under 16 points a game during the five exhibition games. And that's deceiving because nobody played more than 20 minutes. I know. Joe Johnson, 19.8. Yep. So now a 16-point lead for the U.S. after leading by just six at the half. Much more aggressive trap that time on Arroyo. Maybe a halftime adjustment. And uh, the U.S. getting a good recovery there defensively. And Carmelo Anthony has yeah. been terrific, hasn't he? <laughs> on both ends. Yes. There's the dribble penetration. It was Howard and James who... We're there to meet Ayuso at the rim. How about Howard's effect on the defensive end tonight? That's against the shot clock, and uh, the three-pointer goes down. Well, Larry Ayuso, not only can he beat you with the dribble, but he has always been an outstanding deep shooter. In fact, that was really his strength as a younger player and not the penetration. 
Anthony. Saved in play by the U.S. Now a loose one and Puerto Rico in possession. Uh-oh. Let's see, that quick shot's going to lead to this at the other end. Dwayne Wade on the payoff end of it. Wade has 11. Well, this USA team has a lot of firepower, and very shortly we'll see Mike Krzyzewski. It's interesting now, he hadn't subbed as quickly in the second half, and we talked about, you know, sometimes you get a little more continuity, J.D., when you let these guys play a few more minutes. But on the other hand, he did use about everybody in the first half, mm -hmm. so everyone's had a taste of That's this right. game. Everybody's broken a sweat. Mm -hmm. Wade called for the foul. That's his second. I do think as the tournament goes on, particularly you get into that final 16 or 8, probably want to go with a solid 8 or 9. And now we get a double foul called. This is where, if you're if you're a player right now, you just want to keep your cool because you don't know these officials and they don't know you. So, hand gestures. You see the two off the ball, Howard. It's like Howard and Santiago hmm? picking up the double foul. It's three on Howard, and I have four on Santiago. Well, un unlike NBA officials, they don't really know these guys, and they don't know their peculiarities. But Santiago is remaining on the floor, and that's a good follow by Reyes. Reyes, a young man, getting the opportunity because of the injury to Sh Sharif Fajardo. And the U.S. gets another attempt here. Last touch by Puerto Rico. Over six minutes left, and in Group B tonight, Germany defeated Japan. Dirk Nowitzki with 27 points and 10 rebounds for Germany in their 10-point win over the host country. That's another team, Germany, mm -hmm. with uh, one of the top players in the NBA performing. Oh, nice. And coast to coast, and a little breakdown that time. USA slow in transition. And Arroyo has 17. How about Dirk Nowitzki? 104 games last season, playoffs and regular season. And three weeks later, he's back practicing with the German national team. But that's the way he's been mm -hmm, all sure during has. his uh, basketball life. So Ayuso delivering again from long range. As I mentioned, this young man, Roswell, New Mexico, played at New Mexico Junior College. Played for Bill Walton's teammate, Henry Bibby, at, UC, at USC. Uh -huh. And he could really do this, J.D. Always been a great shooter. Played in Europe, plays in the Puerto Rican Professional League. Young man we talked about from the South Bronx. And Arroyo, his running mate in the backcourt, has scored 17 tonight. A Uso with 11, so that's uh, 28 of their 61 from the starting guard line. And uh, Heinrich handling as Lebanon defeats Venezuela tonight in uh, Group A by 10. When you think of all that, that team had to leave their country prematurely, so right. all the things going on and over there. The United States had a 16-point lead earlier in this third quarter. And now Puerto Rico with a chance to get the deficit down to 10 or 9 with a long one. Ramos. Anthony out on the move. And it's Arroyo bringing it back the other way for Puerto Rico. What's that expression? Talk on defense. <laughs> Uh, you see, you saw that double team again. They're not going to let Arroyo beat them off the dribble in that pick and roll. It's Ramos getting his shot blocked. How about a three from Joe Johnson? Only his third of the game. From the same spot. 
And I'll tell you, that speaks to Mike D'Antoni's running game. Mike Krzyzewski has given Mike D'Antoni a lot of leeway in the offense. Of course, Joe Johnson should know that offense. That's right, having played for Mike D'Antoni at Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And now we get uh, a foul called on the United States. You've got a 15-point lead if you're Mike Krzyzewski. The mindset has to be right now to put this Puerto Rico team away, to send a message not only to them, J.D., but the teams in the rest of this tournament. Shane Battier and Chris Bosch have returned for the U.S. And this is not the best backcourt they will see in this tournament, as good as Ayuso and and Arroyo have played tonight. Number eight, Apodaca making the inbounds. And Arroyo guarded by Heinrich. That's Apodaca. Yep. Young man from Hofstra University in New York. 18 points a game as a senior. Another one of those New York kids that are playing on this Puerto Rico national team. Three-point field goals keeping Puerto Rico within uh, striking distance. Time's a wasting for the U.S. Elton Brand under to Bosch and a foul on Ramos. Well, and you see how quickly Puerto Rico has gotten it back to eight because of that shooting you mentioned. And with, uh, let's see, 13 minutes and 36 seconds left, the United States hasn't uh, been able to shake them yet. Chris Bosch really developing uh, with the Raptors. Another one from the class of 03, the NBA draft class of 03. Pretty good. Yes, it is. <laughs> that there may come a day uh, in the future when we talk about that 03 class in uh, the same kind of reverence as the 1984 class of the NBA. Great players in that class. And off the drive by Ayuso, a goal 10, score the basket, I guess. Well, once again, dribble penetration now becoming that Achilles heel for the U.S. That was a Royal scoring, and now it's Brand uh, returning to the scoring ledger for the U.S. at just a nine-point lead. If you're joining us late, the U.S. was up 16 earlier in this third quarter. More penetration into the lane, and now Ayuso limps away from that. Dwayne Wade called for the foul. Three on him. There's that uh, class of 03. There you go. Yep. Of course, LeBron one, Carmelo three, Dwayne Wade five, Kirk Heinrich picked seventh by the Bulls, and don't forget Darko Milicic. Yep. Has started to play well. And is in this tournament. In this tournament for Serbia and Montenegro. It's really had a good pre-tournament run for that young Serbia team. Arcado Perfectoral Sports Center seats about 8,000 for basketball. And that's Elton Brand denying the drive to the rim by Reyes. But a technical foul call on Puerto Rico. Coach Toro got that technical foul early in the exhibition game, and I've been there. I know what that's like. <laughs> Emotional guy. Of course, his team mirrors his passion, the way they play. And so Heinrich will shoot two. Kirk Heinrich, great Kansas guard, played for his dad, Jim Heinrich, in high school. Kirk Heinrich with the two free throws, eight points in the game. I think he's probably the least likely guy anybody thought would make this USA team, but he's played very, very well. Now, when you when you look at uh, that Bulls team and mm -hmm. uh, how they got to the playoffs two years in a row, nice move by Bosch. Used the right hand and he used the rim as well. Bosch with his first field goal. And uh, now Chicago adding Ben Wallace to that mix. Hey, and Tyrus Thomas, the number two mm -hmm. pick from LSU. And in fact, they've got an international player, Thabo Cephalosha, who had a terrific summer league, a 6'6 six, six wing player. Six points for Reyes, by the way, as Puerto Rico stays within 11. 
And a foul call on Arroyo. Two fouls on Arroyo. So look at that uh, setup by Reyes. And Kirk Heinrich back to the line. Tell you what I love about that Bulls team, and you add you, you add Ben Wallace to a team that already is a tough team. Two years in a row, led the league in defensive field goal percentage. Yep. And I'll tell you <laughs> and now why. Now they get the defensive player of the year. And there's a guy in this tournament, Andres Nocioni, yes. who was terrific in the playoffs. 22 yep. points a game for yep. the Bulls. You talk about a warrior. About two minutes left in the third. And the personal foul here. Offensive foul. An illegal screen down on the baseline. That's four fouls on Ramos. See that zone? USA getting more and more comfortable. Tipped away by Reyes. Christian Delmau out to Arroyo for three. And underneath... A foul on Reyes. Angelo Reyes trying to get rebound position. Puerto Rico not with the depth that the USA has. That's been a little bit of a factor. And that's going to be a factor for just about every team they play. That's right. Yep. You know, even the teams that have the great NBA players. You're right. Well, they have, they have either A or maybe two great NBA players, but... They don't have that depth, that 12-man depth like the United States. There are two teams in this tournament, in my mind, they're not as talented as the United States, but they have similar kinds of depth, Argentina and Greece. But certainly you're right, France starts four, you know, now three NBA players, because Tony Parker, Tony Parker's his finger, out. yeah. We won't see Tony Parker in this tournament. 130 left in the third. And it seemed like just a minute or so ago it was an eight-point game. Yep. Well, it's it may be an eight-point game. Twelve point game right now. <laughs> I thought he added three on that one actually. Ramos the rebound and with about a minute remaining. This is Dalmau. Four experienced guards for Puerto Rico. Dalmau gives them depth in the backcourt. And uh, away from the ball, we get a whistle down on the baseline. You know, of course, Puerto Rico being a commonwealth of the United States, it's you really got to marvel at the way they play because it's like being a state. All right. It's like having, you know, it's like playing the state of Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Paul returning to the lineup for the U.S. And Arroyo on the free throw line for Puerto Rico has made all five of his free throw attempts tonight. 19 points. Mm -hmm. Now he's got 20. And did you expect anything less from the guy, you know? But you're right about it. His, you know, his reputation has been that of inconsistency yeah. in his yeah. NBA career. That's right. Mercur but he can still be yeah. a very good player. Well, and he can be mercurial. I know he did not get along with Jerry Sloan. Right. <laughs> and I can see why that was. All right, two headstrong guys. Ten-point game. Less than a minute for the third. Elton Brand has picked it up. Daddy A. And it's Joe Johnson for three. Finally misses one. Bosch there for the follow. And the foul will put Bosch on the line. Is that it for Ramos? Is that five? Yes, it is. Ramos with just two points tonight. Finding his way to the sideline. And now they make the announcement that he has indeed fouled out of the game. You know, still developing young man. Washington Wizards took him in the second round. Actually played pretty well, as we mentioned, in that NDBL. But uh, very mechanical. You know, not, the, not a great athlete, but at 7'3", sometimes you may not have to be always. 
Chris Bosch, who started for the United States against Puerto Rico in Las Vegas at the center position. So back to a 12 point lead. Ball loose, but recovered by Puerto Rico. Now they don't have that size inside. And you get one shot right here, and I think that's what Mike Krzyzewski's calling for. Absolutely. Yep, good play. No shot clock involved. The final seconds of the third. Shane Battier with six seconds left. And as Paul made the move, there was contact. And uh, that foul is on uh, Bobby Joe Hatton, who came into the game a moment ago. His first. Coach against that young man. He played at Marist College up in Poughkeepsie, New York. And when he was coaching in Manhattan, we had to try to guard him. He's turned into a nice player. Chris Paul has a chance to put the United States up by 14 after three. Nope. Time runs out. The third quarter has come to an end. Well, the U.S. took a six-point halftime lead and pushed it out to 16. Puerto Rico came back. They had it down to eight. But it's still the U.S. up by double digits at the end of three. Quarter underway with the United States up 13 and in the first possession for Puerto Rico, a foul. LeBron James has his second personal. Well, Ricky Apodaca will be able to tell his grandkids about that. LeBron knocked him down and then helped him up. Just underway here in the fourth, the Nike storyline, a 16-point game working for Carmelo Anthony. And Carlos Arroyo has led Puerto Rico and leads all scorers with 23. The overall depth of the U.S. having uh, its toll against Puerto Rico, although still they're getting penetration to the rim. And on the rebound, finally cleared by Howard. And Carmelo Anthony gets two more, so that's 18 for Anthony. Now Carmelo has done it every different way tonight. He's knocked down the three, he's posted up inside, and then there you see the versatility of the catch and drive and the foul, the opportunity to make it a three-point play. Arvey's picking up the foul is first. You know, with so much hype about Dwayne Wade and LeBron James, J.D., you get the feeling that this tournament is going to skyrocket Carmelo back into that stratosphere where he really was coming into the league. Yeah. A couple of off, off the court minor issues clouded that, but certainly he's been a man on a mission. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the competition between those three mm -hmm. now has become one of, well, who's got the rings? Yep. Well, Wade has one. <laughs> and the others don't have any. But <laughs> they're going to want theirs, too. Oh, nice. Howard staying with it. It was kept alive by LeBron James. Well, and again, you see the effort on the backboard. Great hustle and Dwight Howard's strength right now is his strength. This 18-point lead is the biggest for the U.S., and here they come trying to add to it. It's Carmelo Anthony giving the United States a 20-point lead and apparently sending them on to victory in game one. Eight and a half remaining. WNBA playoffs continue later today with a pair of Game 2 matchups on ABC and ESPN2. First, 3.30 Eastern on ABC. Cheryl Swoops leads the Houston Comets into Sacramento to take on the Monarchs. Yolanda Griffith, the star. Then at 6 on ESPN2, the Detroit Shock host the Indiana Fever. And in Sapporo City, Japan, the United States with a 20-point lead on Puerto Rico. 820 left. You realize this is 94 points in about 32 minutes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, at the half, let's see, they were at a 114-point pace 
So they're probably right about there. Howard is fouled before he can put it down. And there will be a lot of things from this game tape that Mike Krzyzewski can use to build on defensively and continue them to improve. And what can the opponents build on from this game tape in uh, terms of how to play the U.S.? Well, the one thing you've got to do is take care of the basketball in the half court and not let uh, not not let the U.S. in transition. How about that? Australia, a six-point winner over Brazil. Remember, mm -hmm. it was Brazil who played the United States a four-point game in the uh, exhibition season. The United States participating here in the preliminaries of Group D with Puerto Rico, their opponent tonight, also China, Italy, Slovenia, and Senegal. Remember this, J.D., that Group C has got a deep group, and that could be Brazil or Australia in the third or fourth, but obviously the U.S. is the favorite to win this group. And so, therefore, they would be playing the fourth seed out of C. And it's a good bracket. You look at Australia, Brazil, Greece, Lithuania, Turkey, and Qatar. Trying to go inside and nothing doing that time and Puerto Rico in transition. And Hatton scores to make it a 17 point game. Mike Krzyzewski right now is concerned about how they finish this game. The outcome doesn't look in doubt but certainly you want to play the 40 minutes and I bet you'll see some opportunities for some other people here shortly. Well, a turnover there by Wade. We've already seen in this game Puerto Rico's ability to hit the three, mm -hmm. and especially Ayuso, who is three of four from long range, so they can put some points up quickly. Apodaca. Nice feed inside and a foul called. Oh, it's a goal 10. Score the basket. Reyes gets credit for the hoop. Triple penetration again. Something Mike Krzyzewski will definitely emphasize. See the ball touch the backboard and uh, like the NBA, you can't touch That's it right. now. It's up there on the rim. You can it's, knock it off. Yeah, you Abs can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. As uh, Wade made the drive. Uh, a foul against Puerto Rico. We talked about Group D in which the U.S. is competing. China, they defeated them soundly mm -hmm. in the exhibition. Italy was a team that actually upset a United States team in an exhibition game in 04. Puerto Rico tonight. Senegal, Slovenia. Italy rounded out. Italy. Yep. Italy is without its five of its top six scorers from the European championship a year ago, and remember, Andrea Bargnani, the number one pick in the NBA draft, opted not to play this summer to prepare for his first NBA season with the Toronto Raptors. Well, you saw there two free throws by Wade, and a look at Peter Ramos, who has fouled out for Puerto Rico. Ball loose. Picked up by Paul. You got to shoot that. You have to shoot that. Chris Paul trying to make the unselfish play, and he pats his chest and tells Mike Krzyzewski, my fault. You just got to try to score right here. You don't need to be flashy. You don't need any highlights. And it was a good play by LeBron James to get down and clean it up. And that's what I talked about finishing strong right now. Regardless of the outcome, you want to play the game the way you're going to need to play it later on in this tournament. Howard the rebound. The U.S. trying to extend on the 19-point lead. They've led by as many as 20. And now it's Puerto Rico in transition. Yeah, and a foul. A nice move by Apodaca. Looked like he took that third step. And the foul is on LeBron James. So the U.S. tomorrow morning at 6.30, taking on China here on ESPN2. Then it's Slovenia, Italy, and Senegal to round out play in Group D. And Slovenia with uh, Rasho Nesterovic, Boston Nakbar, who's been in the NBA, Primo Brezic, 
and a Udre from the Spurs, so pretty good club. Ball out of bounds. 525 left. I mentioned the guard. Spain has a backcourt of Juan Calderon of the Raptors. Right. And Juan Carlos Navarro, who makes so much money in Spain that he can't afford to play in the NBA right now. But that might be the second best backcourt in his career. I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> well, he can't get out of his buyout. <laughs> okay. See, he can't. He's got a two and a half million dollar a year buyout. Right. <laughs> There's the three ball and it rattles in and it's a 14 point game. Now, Philly Rivera, a young man that played at UTEP for Billy Gillespie. He's hit two threes yeah. tonight. He was the last man added to this club. Chris Paul gets into a three. And out of bounds to the United States. Puerto Rico's like that dog that gets a hold of your pant leg and doesn't let go. That's Very the, feisty. That's the way they've been tonight. <laughs> You're right. And the steal off the inbounds and now a foul against the U.S. It's on Chris Bosch. Tell you, one of the worst feelings you can have as a coach is when you have a 20-point lead and you wind up winning by six or eight. That's why I mentioned earlier, it's very important that the USA finishes this strong. Because when that happens, then you, like the next day or the next practice you have, you kind of get into your team a little bit, and they're like looking at you like, well, wait, we won. That's exactly right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath uh, a foul on the United States. And you see Julio Toro, the head coach of Puerto Rico. And this will be his final tournament as the head coach of Puerto Rico. Kirk Heinrich back in the lineup for the U.S. Oh, good play. She has a breakdown defensively on the weak side. It's a 12-point game with 419 left. Puerto Rico applying the press. Heinrich left open. It's a dangerous situation right now for Team USA. The defense has not been solid. A three-point field goal makes it a nine-point game. There's a block by Battier. And then Paul was fouled, preventing the thrust up the court. Apodaca called for the foul. Well, we've seen Shane Battier tonight not very often, but we've seen him dive on the floor. That time the block shot. Top 10 in the NBA last year and charges taken. Be a nice fit with the Houston Rockets. Yes, he will. Mm -hmm. Good passer. But the uh, the big thing for the Rockets, of course, <laughs> is getting a healthy Yao Ming back. And so, you know, with that in mind, Heinrich knocks out the three to put the U.S. up by 15. With that in mind, Fran, I think this is good for Yao Ming to be playing in this tournament. I think because of his injury, he'll be farther ahead for the Rockets training camp than he would have been had he not played in well, this I, tournament. I, I think you're right, Jim, and I think they are glad to see him on the court. This is a guy that averaged 23 and 10 a year ago. No basket on that circus shot by <laughs> Apodaca. I, I told you at the very beginning of this game. That definitely <laughs> would have counted in the NBA. FIBA officiating is uneven. It's not that they're, it's just that you never know what you're going to get. And I, well, I, you can't. That's a, that's a good, that's a good clean shot. All right. Now they do count the basket. It's the same guy that waved it off was the same official that went and counted it. And, and that's what we talked about. You're going to get this kind of officiating throughout this tournament. And you've got to play through it. Well, here's what happened. They were <laughs> going to put him on the line anyway. Yeah. Okay. If you're going to put him on the line, that means you've called the foul in the act of shooting. Mm -hmm. That's right. So if he's in the act of shooting, you've got to score the basket. <laughs> that's called deductive reasoning. <laughs> You see that zone again. Chris Paul. You can, Remember, you can do that. Yeah. Paul out 
to Johnson, who's been red hot from three, but he misses on this one. And then a foul call on the United States. It's a shame because it's Battier on the floor hustling, and he's called for the foul. Well, 12 point lead with this type of firepower from these Puerto Rico guards, you don't want to take a deep breath just yet. But you know what? It was a play like that by Battier that I think would make uh, that U.S. coaching staff feel comfortable with a 12 point oh, right. lead. Yeah. Because they're, you know, they are still getting after it. Rivera shooting two. I have a feeling two guys Mike Krzyzewski is going to lean on more and more out throughout this tournament are going to be Battier and Joe Johnson because of Johnson's versatility. What's the call here? It's against Puerto Rico. So the United States uh, with less than three minutes remaining up by a dozen. Heinrich handling it. Here's Joe Johnson. And it's Heinrich with an open three. Ooh, nice. And it's Battier on the tap. Once again, Shane Battier with the effort and the energy. Talk about role players on his team. He's the ultimate role player. And that three goes down. So Puerto Rico hanging around. Carmelo Lee hitting that. The U.S. though content to take as much time off as possible each trip. Heinrich fouled out on the perimeter. Narvaez. Two fouls on him. He's had to come in and play a lot of minutes after Ramos fouled out. But he's another one of the youngsters on this team. Yep, getting valuable international experience. Carlos Arroyo has had a big offensive night sitting on the sideline. See, there were two things that really worried me about USA coming into this tournament, Jim. And the, we know the attitude's been great. We know the, the leadership has been great. But two things. Can you build a cohesive team offensively and defensively in a three-week period? And then everybody on this team except for Battier is the top or second scorer on their NBA team. Can a scorer become a role player in three weeks? And if they do that, I think they're in good shape. But tonight we've seen glimpses of the defense not being as good as it needs to be. And from wire to wire, dribble penetration mm -hmm. has been the Achilles heel. That was Bobby Joe Hatton scoring on the drive. But Mike Krzyzewski and company have things well in hand. Don't forget tomorrow morning at 6.30 on ESPN2. The United States taking on China in Game 2. For those of us NBA draft junkies, you'll see uh, Yi Jinlin, a 19-year-old 6'10 forward, outstanding player. Yao Ming is back. Although not playing at his all-star level, he is uh, back nonetheless, performing for China. Wang Zhuzhu, who has been in the NBA. Joe Johnson got a three blocked. It ends up in Heinrich's hands. And now Puerto Rico with a minute 25 left. Still dangerous on the perimeter. And look at Bosch out defending. Oh, this is something. Yep. Chris Bosch defending against a guard out beyond the three-point stripe. That will be in the highlight package when Mike Krzyzewski shows this team the good and the bad of the half-court defense tonight. Mm -hmm. Good solid effort by Bosch. So with less than a minute remaining, the United States on its way to avoiding the first game upset by Puerto Rico which of course plagued the 04 team in Athens. They were never the same in that tournament once oh, right. that happened. And I think because of the youth of this USA team, they will continue to get better. But trust me, Jim, the competition will get tougher. Less than half a minute remaining. 
And a nice play by Dalmau. All those guards have that Steve Nash runner, that yep. little floater. The U.S. can take it all the way off here with uh, 13 seconds left. Nice move by Paul. Five seconds remaining. And a perimeter shot by Rivera. Well, 101 points the USA gave up, so that will be concerned for Mike Krzyzewski, but very potent offensively. They had 10 more. Mm -hmm. The U.S., which uh, averaged 110 in its five exhibition games, opens play in the FIBA World Championship with a 1-11, 100 win over Puerto Rico.